Hey students, it's Mr. Sagers back with another video for Earth and Space Science. Today's topic is light. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain how we can use light to better understand the universe. Let's get to it. When you look up at the night sky, what do you see? Stars? The moon? Planets? The universe is immeasurably large, filled with countless galaxies, stars, and cosmic mysteries. The sheer size of the universe is both awe-inspiring and breathtaking. However, its enormity poses a problem for those who wish to study it. Given current limitations in technology, traveling to most of these distant objects is out of the question. To date, our moon is the furthest from Earth that humans have ever traveled. And although a voyage to Mars appears to be on the horizon, it is unlikely that we as a species will be leaving our solar neighborhood anytime soon. Fortunately for us, we don't have to leave the confines of Earth to study the universe. Because of light and its unique properties, the universe comes to us. Let's take a moment to consider light. Light, or radiation, is simply energy that travels in the form of electromagnetic waves. Unlike matter, light is not made of atoms or molecules. It travels at an immensely fast speed of 186,000 miles per second, which is often referred to as light speed, or the speed of light. At that rate, light can circle the Earth nearly seven and a half times in one second. Light radiates in every direction from its source. Picture a light bulb. The light from a light bulb does not travel in one direction only. Rather, it radiates outward in every direction. The same goes for the sun or any other object that produces light. Light has wave-like properties as well, in that it can be absorbed, reflected, or refracted as it passes through different types of matter. Plants, for example, absorb sunlight during the chemical process of photosynthesis. The moon reflects the sun's bright light, making it visible to us at night. And the water in rain can refract sunlight, splitting it into all the colors seen in a rainbow. So far, we've only spoken of light that we can see, but what if I told you there's more to light than meets the eye? All light actually falls on a spectrum, commonly referred to as the electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light, or the light that we can see, only makes up a small section of that spectrum. The entire spectrum can be characterized by the intensity of light, or how much energy the light radiates. Radio waves, microwaves, and infrared waves all radiate with less energy than visible light and ultraviolet waves, x-rays, and gamma rays radiate with greater energy than visible light. Even though we can't see the entire electromagnetic spectrum with our eyes, there is ample evidence that it exists. When you turn on a radio, like the one I have here, the radio picks up radio waves that are being broadcast from a local radio station. Join us on Saturday, September 12th at Veterans Memorial Park in West Jordan. When you use your cell phone, you most likely connect to Wi-Fi using microwaves that are transmitted from a nearby router to your phone. If you go outside on a sunny day, you feel infrared radiation from the sun as heat on your skin. If you stay in the sun too long, your skin shows evidence of ultraviolet radiation resulting in a sunburn. If you've ever been to the dentist or doctor, you may have received an x-ray image of the bones in your body. And the use of gamma rays is common in the treatment of some forms of cancer. In reality, light, or electromagnetic radiation, is all around us. But what about objects in the universe far, far away from Earth? It turns out that all objects emit light of some form or another. That light might not be on the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, but it exists nonetheless. So what determines whether you can see the light or not? What determines what part of the spectrum the light comes from? Well, it turns out that the simple answer is temperature. Very hot objects, such as supermassive black holes and very hot stars, emit gamma ray and x-ray radiation. Cooler objects, such as cooler stars and interstellar gas and dust, emit infrared, microwave, and radio wave radiation. Through the years, scientists have developed a variety of tools they can use to study cosmic radiation. You are probably familiar with optical telescopes that use visible light. You may even own one. Scientists use large optical telescopes to study objects in the universe by observing the visible light they give off. These telescopes are often placed high in the mountains in order to avoid the cloudy atmosphere and light pollution in the valleys down below. Some telescopes, like NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, orbit high above Earth, thereby avoiding altogether the problems of having to see through Earth's atmosphere to look into space. Other telescopes, such as radio telescopes, don't use light at all, but rather detect radio waves given off by distant objects in the universe. 
and still other tools can be used to detect ultraviolet, infrared, and X-ray radiation that resonates throughout the universe. By using a combination of these tools, scientists can use the entire electromagnetic spectrum to study the light that objects in the universe give off. They can then use that information to learn about the shape, motion, temperature, and even the age of those objects. Let's take, for example, the Milky Way galaxy. Let's start by looking at the Milky Way as seen through visible light. As stunning as this image is, we fail to see the whole picture because interstellar nebulae obscure much of the galaxy with dark clouds of gas and dust. The use of infrared radiation sheds a little more light on the subject. Visible in this infrared image of the Milky Way is the bright galactic center surrounded by billions of stars. This image shows the Milky Way through gamma radiation. Notice the bright areas of intense gamma radiation in the center of the galaxy and how the intensity of this radiation lessens as distance from the galactic center increases. As scientists use this and other data from electromagnetic radiation, they have been able to piece together a stunning picture of the Milky Way galaxy. Among other things, they have discovered that the Milky Way is approximately 13 billion years old, 100,000 light years in diameter, and home to roughly 300 billion stars. All of this thanks to light. Before we wrap things up, there's one last thing that's important to remember as we study cosmic radiation. Light travels fast, but its speed is not infinite. The distance that light is able to travel in one year is called a light year. A light year is equivalent to approximately 6 trillion miles. Because light cannot travel instantly from one place to another, what we see in the night sky is actually a representation of space as it was when light left the object producing it. For example, You've probably heard that it takes sunlight about eight minutes to travel from the sun to the Earth. This is due to the fact that, even at a rate of 186,000 miles per second, it takes light eight minutes to travel the 93 million mile distance from the sun before it reaches Earth. The star Proxima Centauri is our nearest neighboring star. It is approximately four light years from Earth, meaning it takes starlight from Proxima Centauri four years to reach Earth. Other objects in the universe are much farther away. The center of the Milky Way is approximately 26,000 light years from Earth. So, the light leaving the galactic center of the Milky Way is actually 26,000 light years old when it reaches Earth. In a strange, mind-bending way, therefore, when we look up into the night sky, we're actually looking back in time. To recap, light is electromagnetic energy that travels immensely fast and has wave-like properties. It can be found on a spectrum ranging from low-energy radio waves to high-energy gamma rays. All matter in the universe emits some form of electromagnetic radiation, and scientists use a variety of instruments to study cosmic light. Well, that wraps up our video on light. I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, at Astro.